workers interact with the public? Do they handle cash? Is alcohol served in your establishment? These duties, along with others, such as carrying out protective services, providing care, or working alone, increases the risk of violence to your workers. Hi, I'm Lisa Chavity, and I'm a senior advisor at the Service and Hospitality Safety Association. As an employer, you may be legally required to have a violence prevention policy and plan. Even if it isn't legally required for your industry, if your workers may be at risk, you have a legal responsibility to protect them from all hazards at work, and this includes violence. A violence prevention policy begins with your commitment to minimizing the risk of violence in the workplace. You must consult with your workers when creating this policy and plan, which should be done through your Occupational Health and Safety Committee. If your organization is too small to require a committee, which is less than 10 workers, then you can consult with your OHS representative or the workers themselves. Once your policy is in place, you can start to work on the plan. Your plan will include exactly what you will do to reduce violence and may include a risk assessment, procedures, and training. Before we get into too much detail, let's take a look at one employer who decided that a violence prevention plan would make a difference in his workplace. The safety of our employees is very important so to ensure that my staff is safe upon hiring we do talk about safety of the restaurant and every day before service starts we have a meeting collectively with front of the house and back of the house and we talk about past incidents or the incidents that happened the night before the way that I see it is if they feel safe and comfortable in the place that they work that service is going to be better sales is going to be better incidents happen so often that we have to bring up to the staff continuously this incident happened this is how we should deal with it and so that all the staff is aware of how to deal with the situation when i talk about safety to my employees it's not because it's a legal responsibility i do it because we care you don't have to wait until an incident occurs but if one has it's not too late as with any new policy or plan training your workers will be a key step to ensure its success Workers should receive training about how to recognize violent situations, controls that have been put in place to keep them safe, and how to respond to violent threats or situations. They should also know how to get help and the procedures for reporting violence, threats of violence, or any other potentially unsafe situations. How you act before and react after an incident occurs will show your workers how committed you are to protecting their safety. My staff knows that I care because I'm constantly asking them, are you okay? Uh, just to ensure that you know everything is good, they're safe, they're happy, and you know everything's running smoothly. I bring those past experiences into all my current locations, and I let all the staff know that you don't have to go through these experiences in order to learn about it. You can learn it from my past experience and take it from there. Some positions are inherently riskier than others. In your plan, you should identify the positions and areas where violence is likely to occur or has occurred in the past. This can be clarified by conducting a thorough hazard assessment to start. It's also important for all workers to know about and understand your workplace violence prevention plan. This should look at hazards in four different categories. First, hazards posed by the environment, such as poor lighting, ease of entry or exit to the workplace, neighborhood or area you are located, and the building setup. Second, look at hazards posed by the nature of the work. These were discussed earlier, such as handling cash or valuables, working alone, interacting with the public, and serving alcohol. Third, look at the history of violence in your organization or other similar organizations or those nearby. Fourth, take a look at your workforce itself. Do you employ young workers or other vulnerable groups? Consider surveying your workers to find out their perceptions of the risk of violence. Do they feel safe at work? So what happened to me was after five hours of being closed, when I come out of the bathroom, there was a man standing right outside the bathroom in my hallway with a knife that grabbed me and put a knife to my throat and then proceeded to turn around and walk me into the bar, disarm the alarms, head in and then turned around. He knew exactly where to go behind that bar. When you're handling cash and stuff at the end of the night, on a good night, you can have $40,000 between all your VLT monies, because you have to empty out all the VLTs and stuff, plus all your off sale and your bar drinks. It's enough money that anybody who really wants it 
will do what they have to do to get it. And then it's never just the money. There's a lot of safety factors in the hospitality industry that people don't look at as opposed to regular industry. If you walked into a welding shop, there is a safety program and there's protocols. When you turn around and look at that 19-year-old girl you just hired, you gotta try and imagine that's your daughter or somebody else's at the very least, and you don't want them hurt. You know, stop and look around your surroundings and look and see if there's any other ways that you can turn around and keep those people safe. The safer you keep them, the better you treat them, the longer they stick around. The longer they stick around, the better they get at their job. Down the line, that saves you money. It's the unpredictability. Every day changes. So today, especially in a bar situation, you could be really busy, you know, and you lose track of what's going on in there. And all of a sudden, that's when people turn around and come up behind you. So it's very hard to always watch your back when you don't have eyes in the back of your head. It's better if you don't have to learn and somebody else has already prepared you for that sort of stuff, as opposed to being a 19-year-old girl taking a job in the bar and knowing nothing about what goes on day in, day out. That's what puts you at risk, is being uneducated. To ensure your workers are safe and feel safe, your assessment should result in controls to put in place. These could include providing personal protective equipment or establishing administrative controls, such as a check-in procedure for workers who work alone. Engineering controls can also be used, such as a time delay safe, surveillance cameras, or physical barriers between the workers and the public. The creation of a violence prevention policy and plan is the first step, but you can't stop once it's in place. An effective plan requires regular reviews, ongoing training, and collecting feedback and input from workers. There's lots of places to learn safety. There's the internet, there's videos, there's, there's lots of places you can read about safety. And you know, just to take that initiative to learn about it and then teach and then preach the word about safety. It's gonna make your establishment that much better, you know, uh, in terms of staff morale, uh, the people around you, your guests, your clients. It's just gonna make it a better place to be and, and more enjoyable for everyone. Like many aspects of your safety management system, creating a violence prevention policy and plan will ensure you not only comply with the legal requirements, you will improve the workplace morale and productivity. To ensure you have done enough, the SHSA has developed a checklist called Just That, Have You Done Enough? This checklist is available on the SHSA website under the Resources tab. Every employer has a legal duty to keep their workers safe, and violence is a real risk. If you have any questions about a violence prevention policy or plan, please call the SHSA. We want to keep your workers safe too.